Hi boys and girls, this is Mr. Amster, and today we're talking about the six characteristics of a civilization. Now, before you begin, please make sure that you have the worksheet right here and are aware that when you see an underline, like you see down here, that that is where you add in some information. Also, make sure that you're highlighting when I tell you to, and that is right there. Okay, let's get started. So, as we run through this, we need to first know what a civilization is, all right? And this is an advanced state of human society. It's a way for us to categorize which civilizations, which cities, which countries had certain characteristics that allowed them to make certain achievements. And we're looking at the economy, geography, written language, social class, culture, and population. Take a moment right now and pause the video if you need to type these up. Now, I'm assuming you've paused the video uh, if you needed more time. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Now, be careful to not associate civilization with civilized and everyone else is barbarians or primitive. These are just simple benchmarks we look at as we move forward in society. Okay, it's not just about us and them. It's about understanding just what about each civilization was unique and what and how they accomplished each of these things. Now, at some point, you may realize that if you searched characteristics of a civilization, you could see anything from five to 10 characteristics. Those are all correct. It's just how you choose to categorize a civilization. We are following the National Geographic model, which says that there are six, but there is anywhere from five to ten. Okay, moving on. First one up we have is economy. Now, a civilization must be able to produce a stable food supply. Now, they accomplish this through the domestication of animals and agriculture, and this allows them not only to have a stable food supply, but a surplus. Let's take a moment and highlight to produce a food surplus, okay? Because once you have a stable food supply, you're pushing towards a surplus. Now, what you see here is people in, I'm going to assume because there is different layers here that this is either in Mesopotamia with a ziggurat or it could be early Egypt with a step pyramid, all right? It certainly is that climate. And you see that there's farming going on with domesticated animals, with people using them to farm. Why is this important? Bonus question, extension time. Now, with agriculture and domestication, how does that help us to create a stable food supply versus hunting and gathering? Hmm. Now, if you need some time to write up this answer, pause the video. All right, I'm assuming you've paused the video and answered the question, and we're gonna keep going. But again, if you need more time, pause the video, but for now, we're gonna keep going. All right, next up we have is social class. Civilizations have a social structure. This is controlled through different jobs and social levels or status. Now, in ancient times, a social pyramid could look like this. You have a ruler at the top. You have landowners and nobles, priests, government officials. Below that, you have the common class. And at the bottom, you have slaves. Take a moment right now and highlight social structure. controlled through different jobs and social levels. Now our question for an extension is, what is the social structure pyramid at your school? As you look out and you think across the kids in your class, teachers and other people, what's the social order look like? And if you're not thinking about school, you're like, eh, you know, what does it look like at your home? Who's in charge? 
Is it mom? Is it dad? Is it your baby brother or sister? Are they the ones who control everything? Is it your big siblings? Is it an uncle you live with? Is it a guardian? Is it grandma? Is it grandpa? Who's in charge and who's in, in the, who's right below them and all the way down? All right, feel free, of course, to pause the video as you think about this. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Now, our next one is geography and government. They connect, but I want to split them up just so you can see how they look separately before I bring them together. So as we're looking, we can see that the United States has defined boundaries from Canada and Mexico, but also between states. You can see it between these two countries, Pal New Guinea and Indonesia. All right, a civilization needs defined boundaries. It has to agree where its domain, its area ends and another begins. Why that's important is that its government provides the people with protection and order. The government is in charge of enforcing laws, construction, leading the army and the distribution of food. Now, how does that affect the boundaries? How does that affect the people? The people need to agree to follow this, right? There's only a few rulers. They have to agree to behave. They have to want to help build a better country. They need to be in the army, all right? They need to potentially have a job of growing food and distributing it. Now, every civilization has its own style of rulers. You could have kings and pharaohs early on. A little bit later, we see oligarchies and senate. An oligarchy is where you have like two to three rulers. Right now, if you look in the United States, we have a president. And if in religion, you know, if you are of the Catholic faith, you know that the pope is the leader of the Catholic church. Now, how does the government help you? Hmm. Hmm. What do you do five days a week? Hmm. You go someplace that, and that is considered something that's run by the state and the school, which means it's by the government. Hmm. How do you get there? Those things are organized by the government. Constructed, if you will. Oops. Take a moment right now to highlight Oops, let's go back. Defined boundaries, protection, order, enforcing laws, construction, leading the army, and distribution of food. And take the time to answer the question. Please, of course, feel free to pause the video if you need to. Okay, I've, I would assume that you're all done with this because I'll check it next class. Here we go. Moving on. The next thing we need is a highly developed culture. Now, culture is a way to show what a civilization values and by value, what's important to them. Civilizations must have a highly developed culture, which includes arts, religion, architecture, and learning. Now, you can see here an example of, of a art, which is music. You see an early, what's called a lyre, okay? It's a musical instrument and you use the strings to play it. You see religion down here. You see a ziggurat, which is in Sumer. What culture do you see today? What role, what is religion's role in society today? Is religion important to you? If so, why? If not, why? Okay, and maybe you don't wanna talk about religion, that's fine. Maybe your family is really into art, architecture, sports. All of these things are part of a culture of a society and of a family. You know, does your family like to go golfing as a group? Do you guys all go to baseball games together? Do you attend the theater together? These are all unique things you could do. Is your family's idea of a culture cooking a meal together? All right, make sure that you take the time to highlight highly developed culture, arts, religion, architecture, learning. 
And be specific. Don't just highlight everything. Highlight what I'm telling you to do. All right. Feel free, of course, to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Population. All civilizations must have a concentration of population in their area. You got to have people, right? It can't just be a person saying, you know, I am a civilization. No, this is a group of people. All right. Highlight concentration of population distinct areas. All right. You may pause the video now if you need. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Our last one is written language. All civilizations must have a developed written language, a way to communicate, and a way to record things. The beginning of history, right, recording information, means the beginning of writing. Our first known language was cuneiform or cuneiform and ooh, that should be capitalized. So as you type that in, capitalize that C. And now it's created by the Sumerians. Another example is pictographs like hieroglyphics. Hmm. What would your life be like without writing? Whew. I mean, that would mean no computer, no phone, no TV, no books. Oh, no books. That's sad. Hmm. What would life be like for you? Write that answer below. All right. You can, of course, continue to pause if you need more time. But the last thing I want you to highlight, developed written language. First known language, capitalized cuneiform, created by the Sumerians. All right, now you're done, but there's a bonus if you are looking for something extra to do and you're looking for a way to extend your understanding. The question is, how do you fit into a civilization? Now, each of these is a valuable piece. How many within your life can you identify? Create a poster, and it should be colorful, showing examples of the six characteristics of a civilization present in your life. Now, I'm going to go back a few slides. All right. Now, I bet you could name six or five of these characteristics pretty easily. Okay? You can identify where you get the food. You can identify the area around your house, maybe, or your apartment. You can identify who's in charge. You communicate with each other. There's written words going on. Social class. There's a group of you. So there's a pop. There's. Ooh, that could be a tricky one. Population. Hmm. Is all of your family close together or are they spread out? That one we have to modify a little bit and that's okay. And most importantly as well, I'd like to hear about the culture. So all the way back. All right. How do the six fit into your life? All right. If you have any questions, of course, you can feel free to email me. But that's it. And have a great day. Bye.